Hey guys, Corbin here, and this is my new dust boot for my Avid CNC. But the design is modular and will work for any CNC machine. You can download the files for free and print your own at home on a small format 3D printer. I'll put the link to get them in the description. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the features and design goals of my dust manifold. Then I'll talk about some tips on how to successfully 3D print it. And finally, I'll go into the basic assembly process. First of all, design goals. This is the second iteration of my dust boot, so I'm adding features and solving some problems. First of all, the design is modular and done in Fusion 360. You can download the CAD file and make any changes you want to it. It is also parametric, which means you can go to the Change Parameters window and change any of the parameters to dynamically change settings. So, for example, you could change the 90 millimeter spindle to be a 70 millimeter spindle, and the design will just update. Or you could go from a 6 inch dust port to a 4 inch dust port. I'll also export the models in various sizes as an SDL for those of you who just want to print it and don't want to mess with Fusion 360. My top design goal was to work with my automatic tool changer, or ATC. And this meant I had to have a really slim design so it could fit between the tool racks and between each tool station and not have to remove the dust boot to do a tool change. I also had to have enough room from the front to the back to actually allow space to do the change. My tool change happens along the y-axis, which means my dust boot actually has to be pointing forward in order for it to do the change in this direction. But if you don't have an ATC, you could actually rotate to the side. To better illustrate that, here it is turned to the side. If I didn't want to have this much space, that's just a parameter in Fusion 360, and so the angle wouldn't be as drastic, which might be a little bit better for dust collection. But I want mine in the front, and it has to clear everything. My next design goal was to make the brush easy to remove. This allows you to easily do manual tool changes, but I can also print different dust hoods with different length brushes for different length bits that I'm using for a particular operation. I use rare earth magnets to attach the dust hood to the main spindle clamp. And I think I actually used uh, too many magnets because it is a little bit harder than I was hoping to actually remove it. So if you do this design, maybe first install every other magnet and see if it's strong enough for you. There are different strength rare earth magnets, and I bought some of the strongest ones. So you'll notice I did a split design for my dust hood, and I did this for a couple reasons. So first of all, I could have the back half on, just take the front half off, and do a manual tool change if I need to. But I can also actually start a cut with just the back half on, get some dust collection going, and then if everything looks good, while the machine's running, I can just go ahead and slip on the front half relatively safely and then get good dust collection again. One of the problems I had with my first dust hood was no latch points to keep it from getting pushed off. And eventually, my original one did get pushed off, and it got chewed up a little bit. So here's the original one. The base slid off and has a chunk that was taken out of it. However, one thing that I already noticed is my back tab might actually be getting in the way, depending on where and how your spindle is mounted. Next, I designed the dust port to attach with magnets. And that way, I can just pop it off, and I have a big vacuum cleaner to clean up my table, and it just goes back on and stays on. Like the bottom side, there are some tabs to keep it from getting pulled or pushed off, but it's still not too hard to actually manually move and use. On my first version, I had a friction fit where I'd friction fit it on and off. I meant to glue it together, but I found it so useful to just pull this off and use it like a vacuum cleaner that I designed it into this version. Finally, the other design goal, by having a whole bunch of separate pieces, means I could actually print it on a small format 3D printer. 
This size in itself is too big to fit in my printer, but as individual pieces, I can make it fit. So now some tips on getting a successful 3D print on one of these. So for this project, I used 3D Fuel's PLA Plus to print it. Uh, the PLA Plus is just a little bit stronger than regular PLA. And my first version was just plain PLA, which worked fine. My spindle doesn't get very hot. If you have a spindle that doesn't have air cooling and gets too hot to touch, then it might melt PLA. So if that's the case, you might have to use something else like ABS. So one of the first things I had to do was some fitment tests. And so this is just one of the test pieces that I have in my Fusion model to make sure it fits in. A little bit loose, but it's okay. Makes it easy to get in and out. I also have a fitment test for the magnets. So, so here's the magnet. Fits in really easy. And I could make it a little bit tighter. On my previous versions, I had it be just a press fit, but now this one's doesn't, it'll fall out if you shake it hard enough. Let me show you the problem I had with my first spindle clamp print. Might be a little hard to tell, but it's not flat and it's rocky. I, I printed it upright, printed everything upright. And the problem I had here is I got some curling and lift up on this side, which made the front have really bad print quality. But worse, the curl means I couldn't really use it because it wouldn't make a tight fit. And the curling that happened to me really is just something that happens if it starts to cool a little bit excessively and didn't stick well to the table uh, or the print bed. And so what I did is just, I just used glue stick on my, my print bed and that made me not have any issues. I also upped the bed temperature from 50C to 60C. Before I started doing that, I was having the same problems with my dust hood holders. And so on those, I actually had a skirt, which I had to cut off later. I don't think the skirt was necessary, but it just was some added insurance. I'll include my press of slicer files so you can see my exact print settings that I used and the layout, but there really wasn't anything fancy. Everything was printed upright. I did get a little bit of roughness on the dust port because it's pretty overhangy. Also have a little bit of roughness right here where it's pretty steep too. I could probably fix that in the design, but I didn't get any fallout in the bridging, so I'm just gonna go for it. So I printed all the pieces. It would have been cool to have a nice time lapse, but instead you can just watch me snapping it off the bill plate. All right, 11 and a half hours. It sticks on really well. Since I printed a skirt around the dust hood portion, I had to clean that up a bit. I just used an X-Acto knife and scraped it off. I don't think I really needed to have printed that extra skirt for adhesion. And so when I do another one, I'm gonna try it without it. Okay, let's do some assembly and see if this all works. So a quarter 20 nut goes into this slot. And Looks like I printed it, it's a little bit too small to just do a press fit into this piece. I should have had it have a little bit more. Oh, there we go. Actually, it fit in perfectly. If it didn't fit in, I could pull it in with the screw, the bolt. All right, let's mix up some five minute epoxy. All right, let me talk about some of the brushes that I've been testing. This is the first brush I used, and it's a three inch long brush. I liked it because I could cut up to three inch depth of things and not really have issues. 
some of the problems is it started to push in and was getting chewed away by the CNC. But worse for tool changes, after a while, these bristles would stick out and get stuck in the uh, spindle when it was doing a change. So I, I uh, decided to try and find something else. A shorter brush would solve the problem of it getting stuck in the ATC. And this brush is a lot softer, and so they tend to fall back a lot easier and to not get stuck in the ATC. Disadvantage is I haven't been able to find a longer one, so this is just two and an eighth inches. But I do like it, so I pulled it off my old one. I'm going to use it again. All right, let's see how hard this is to get into my print. Just thinking I could push it in and slip it around. I think, no, I think that's actually enough friction to kind of hold this in without any additional help. But I'm going to put dabs of hot glue on the inside. All right, so for some final assembly here. So I designed this guy so it could go up and down a bit to give, I don't know, up to about an inch of adjustability. Uh, ultimately, I don't really want it below the flat part of my spindle. That way I can maximize my cuts that I'm doing. Let's see how well this goes on. Ooh, that's nice. So in conclusion, let me talk about costs. So I printed this out of Pro PLA Plus, and that was about $39 per kilogram for a roll. It's pretty pricey. There are a lot cheaper options out there. So for my 3D printed parts, I spent about uh, $17.31. The magnets, I used about uh, 30 magnets. They were about $0.32 cents each, and that's about $10. Bucks. I bought a pack of 100 because I use them for other things. The uh, brushes were about $14 each. A quarter 20 bolt and nut I already had laying around, so I don't include that in the cost. So my total, my total was about $41 for printing this myself at home. So let me know in the comments what you think. It'd be great to hear from you. In particular, I'd love to hear if you have any design ideas on things I should change or add, and uh, maybe I can make some modifications. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.